feast of Passover and unleavened bread were to be observed in two days' time. And therefore, the chief priests and scribes began to look for a way to arrest Jesus by some trick and kill him. Not during the festival, the people may riot. When Jesus was in Bethany, reclining at table, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman entered, carrying an alabaster jar of perfume. Breaking the jar, the woman began to pour the perfume on his head. What is the point of this extravagant waste of perfume? It could have been sold for over Let her alone. Why do you criticize her? She's dummy and kind. Or do you always have with you? Be generous no matter you wish. It's not always that mean. She's done what she could. If I could prove my body, she would take the day in preparation to bury it. And I assure you, whatever the thing you do to proclaim throughout the world, what she had done would be told in her memory. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest again, Jesus, over to them. Hearing what he had to say, they were jubilant and promised to give it to He, for his part, kept looking for an opportune way to hand Jesus over. On the first day of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Paschal lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you wish us to go to prepare a Passover supper for you? Go into the city. You'll we'll find a man carrying a water jar. Follow him. Whatever house he enters, save the owner. The teacher has the death for his, and may he has a meal with his disciples. So show him up their room, spacious, furnished, and all in order. That's the place you ought to get ready for. The disciples went off. When they reached the city, they found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover supper. As it grew dark, he arrived at the twelve. Sleep time! 
like you'd stay away for even an hour? Be a guard, afraid that you may not be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but nature is weak. Going back again, he began to pray in the same words. Once again, he found them asleep on his return. They could not keep their eyes open, nor did they know what to say to him. He returned a third time. Still sleeping? Still taking your ease? Well, have to do. The hour is on us, and you see the Son of Man handed over to the clutch of the evil men. Grab yourselves and come along. See, my betrayer is near. Even while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, made his appearance accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs. These people had been sent by the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. The betrayer had arranged a signal for them. The man I embrace is the one. Arrest him and lead him away, <clears throat> taking every precaution. Rabbi. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off their ear. Come out to arrest me, armed with swords and clubs, as if you were against a brain. I was within your reach daily, teaching the temple precincts, yet you never arrested me. But now, so that the scripture may be fulfilled. With that, all deserted him and fled. Then they led Jesus off to the high priest, the chief priest, all the elders, and the scribes. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the priest's courtyard, where he found a seat with the temple guard and began to warm himself at a fire. The chief priests, with the whole Sanhedrin, were busy soliciting testimony against Jesus that would lead to his death, but they could not find any. Many spoke against him falsely under oath, but their testimony did not agree. Some, for instance, on taking the stand, testified falsely. We heard him declare, I'll destroy this temple made by two hands, and in three days, construct another, not made by two hands. Have you no answers for these men testify against you? Are you a sire to the blessed one? I am. You see the Son of Man, see the right hand of the power, coming with the blood of heaven. Jesus 
soldiers now led Jesus away into the hall known as the Praetorium. At the same time, they assembled the whole cohort. They dressed him in royal purple, then wore the crown of thorns, and put it on. When they finished mocking Jesus, they stripped him of the purple, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to be crucified. A man named Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was coming in from the fields when they pressed him into service to carry the cross.
God 